Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. I have a mystery package. It's New Year's Eve, by the way, so happy New Year's to you. Um, I received this. I've just got back from my vacations. No idea what it was, so I thought I'll record my unboxing or unwrapping or opening, whatever you want to call it, because I had no idea and it might be something cool, a teardown item. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something boring. We shall find out. <gasps> Well, it's certainly not a teardown item, but it is an interesting item. I bet you can't tell what it is. I've got some paperwork here. Just having a quick look off camera. blah de blah de blah 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 All you need to see here is Pi Zero. £3.33 plus £2.50 shipping and handling and VAT £6.50. Yes, indeedy, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, yeah, I guess it is a kind of a teardown lab thing because, you know, we, we use these to make all sorts of things. I'm just looking around, seeing if my, you know, I've got a Raspberry Pi lying around somewhere to compare it to. I probably have. And indeed I do right here. This is a 3B. Just to give you a sort of idea in the sort of scale, this has got a gadget that's been sort of attached to it. I'm going to remove the gadget which is a screen. Interesting enough, while I'm here, it certainly appears that a Pi Zero has the same expansion header, so you could turn this, say, screen and buttons into something quite groovy. So I'll put that aside for now. So there's the Raspberry Pi 3 and there's the Pi Zero. So it's certainly missing certain things. You can see that there's a lack of ports. You've got the multiple USB ports here and then clearly none on here that although they probably they probably do exist. It certainly has a power in port. I can read that quite clearly. Cleary. Clary. Clearly. You can see power in there. So that's probably just dedicated power in and really hooks up to these bits here, which is probably just the power supply system. And here you've got the USB, and that's the sort of single USB, probably on the go. I do believe a Pi has an on the go, which means you can make this into a kind of a pen drive as well, which is neat. You've got a mini HDMI, or is it a micro? I always get confused with the two. It's certainly bloody small, and uh, now that I'm looking at it going, yeah, I'm going to need to buy an adapter before I can even try this, <laughs> annoyingly. And there's your SD card slot, very similar to the one you get on the back. In fact, it's pretty much the same sort of part number. So yeah, I've just also noticed on the back of the other Pi, there's something else too. What could it be? Because you've got on here a sort of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chipset somewhere. I'm guessing that could be it. Well, let's not worry about that. Let's more worry about this. So. To compare this to sort of a square type business card, it's pretty tiny. You should be able to fit this in all manner of cases. You certainly can run your RetroPie and all of your sort of arcade game type things on this. The spec, I think, is slightly less, less great, man, than uh, this one. In fact, I always thought that the Broadcom chip here was the uh, main processor, but if you look on the back, they both share this same uh, ELPIDA chip. So. Uh, Perhaps that's actually the ARM processor. So the Broadcom thing on here must be just zapping all sorts of the I.O. If you do know the answer to that, please let me know down below. So yeah, it's a nice little thing. I would wish that you could actually buy them for sort of three pounds or whatever, but you can't. Just notice something on the back right there. And I'm going to zoom in. And while I'm zooming in, I'm just going to have a quick shuffle, shuffle around my box of bits and bobs. You can hear that. There we go, found it. Now I've got a whole shelf full of zillions of project boxes like this. Um, and I'll actually zoom back out just to show you for all my billions and billions of previous projects. And that's good because there's often interesting bits. Now just to show you what I did spot on this board. So you've got your test points here, which are great. And these are probably IO. You probably just solder straight in to get some IO. But look at this guy here. Does that not look suspiciously like a USB port? And I'm just sort of trying to count the pins. It seems to have too many bloody pads though. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pads. 
Now the USB though only has one, two, three, four, five. Although it could be an on the go, but then we do know that this is a USB on the go and that's only got five pads. So I have no idea what that is. I was hoping it's just, look, I could just solder that in and get yourself an extra USB. That's probably not the case. I don't know. Um, so all these see PP1, PP40, PP35, these things here dotted around. I, they could be test points, but it's actually more likely, knowing how Raspberry Pis are constructed, that you can just hook into these for sort of GPIO and power and just I.O. basically on the board that they haven't been able to fit on a header somewhere. Because you can see header space is at a premium. Camera interface. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm uh, going to be looking forward to giving this a go. And uh, it shall be most pleasing, no doubt. So if you've got any interesting Pi Zero projects yourself, please feel free to comment down below and let me know what you've managed to do with these. Have you found any limitations in the hardware? Because it does look a little bit uh, Spartan, shall we say, compared to one of these. Please uh, click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thanks for watching and Happy New Year. Bye.